According to Governor Wall's budget blueprint, his proposed health care reform, One Care Minnesota, would offer health coverage options, encourage stability in the individual market, provide consumer choice, address rising health care costs, and improve the health care experience for all Minnesotans. Joining me to talk more about this proposal is physician and Senator Matt Klein. Welcome. Hi, Shannon. You offered the governor's One Care proposal as an amendment on the Senate floor last week. What is One Care? So first of all, it's important to talk about what the problem is in Minnesota. A lot of people get their health insurance through their job or possibly through a public program, but there's about 100,000 people who just go out on the individual market and try to buy their own insurance. And for those people, their premiums are unattainably high uh, and their deductibles are so high that they often don't even seek care. It tends to be individual business owners or farmers. And Governor Wall's one care option uh, is a public program. It's an insurance product that we already offer to people in the form of Minnesota Care, working poor people, that would be available to everybody, that they would be able to purchase a health insurance product from the state that would give them platinum level coverage and cover their health care needs, and it would be sustained by the premiums that individuals pay. If I understand correctly, then, this is not an extension of health insurance for all or single payer, because I think sometimes that gets confused. But as you said, it is a program just for that subset of people. But this is that same subset that the Republican proposal uh, that became reinsurance that they would like to extend is also tackling. So why move in this direction? Why not continue with reinsurance? We spent 300 to $500 million, depending on how you calculate the numbers, on reinsurance last session. And that was actually paychecks that went right out to insurance companies in the hopes that they would hold down their premium rates. And it worked to an extent. They brought down rates about 20%. Governor Walls feels, and I feel, uh, that we don't want to continue indefinitely giving big paychecks to insurance companies. Uh, we would rather try to give reduced costs to individual Minnesotans or offer them a product that they can afford. One Care is a public product, but it's an insurance product. It's not free health care for all. It's not Medicare for all. It's an insurance product that you would buy from the state and that we know through our experience with Minnesota Care offers quality, high quality, and affordable health care for people who purchase it. Last week, uh, Minnesota Management and Budget Commissioner Myron Franz was on the program, and we talked a little bit about One Care. He said it won't be fully ready to roll out for a couple more years. Is it possible that reinsurance could continue until One Care is available, or does, it, does a choice need to be made now? Something needs to be done this session because those people in the individual market can't wait while we figure this out and continue to pay premiums of $30,000 a year. So if reinsurance ends up being what we do to bridge to uh, one care, that may end up happening. Uh, there are other proposals. The governor has also proposed direct rebates to people in the individual market. Rather than sending money to insurance companies, send money to Minnesotans. That's a good option. We do need to do something, but we need to commit that whatever that bridge is to uh, a full solution like One Care is just a bridge, and it's not something that we're doing forever. Under the plan, platinum level coverage would be available for purchase anywhere in the state, and those, those plans cover 90% of a person's costs. Right. Gold and silver level plans would only be available in areas where there is not adequate commercial options available. So there's sort of a tiering and, and decisions about who gets access to what. What's the rationale behind that? So I think the governor was quite conscious to choose a platinum level product because he didn't want to interfere with the individual market as it exists here in Minnesota. Right now there are not platinum level products available from most health insurance plans in most parts of the state. Uh, you know, this would allow that. This would provide a public option that has platinum level coverage, which means very low deductibles and very low uh, premiums. Sorry, very low deductibles. Uh, mm -hmm. And in any case, uh, in certain, but in the, in the backup situation, uh, where maybe the plans abandoned a certain part of the state geographically, which they have done before and offered no products in a part of the state, why then we would step in with gold and silver level, level products uh, in those areas just to cover a, a deficit, basically. So if you're a farmer in an area of the state that has a lot of insurance competition, you would have the option of buying the platinum level one care uh, in turn, and, and also any others that are commercially available. That's if right. you're in an area where there are very few options, you would have the option to buy a lower level plan, but you would have access to a health care marketplace, essentially. That's exactly right. And, and, and the, the plan sort of abandon a certain county in the state, which again has happened before far western or rural parts of the state where all of a sudden there are no private health plans at all. 
uh, you know, then the state would jump in with a, a Minnesota care type product that would allow you to buy a gold or a silver plan from the state in those areas. Candidly, I think we should be doing that right away, and I think it really improves our leverage in encouraging the plans to continue geographics coverage throughout the entire state. On the Senate floor, uh, it was it was mentioned that this is an extension of government controlled health care. Critics say that when government gets involved in health care and creates more programs, then, then they take on a life of their own. How do you counter those who fear this is just one step among many towards government-run health care? Well, first of all, let's look at how well the private industry has done at providing health care. Uh, you know, health insurance plans really have only one job to do, and that's manage financial risk uh, and, and set out their costs in an actuarial way so that they don't get into trouble. Uh, and now we're doing that for them. We're, we're giving them $500 million basically to cover their financial risk in the health insurance market every single year. Uh, and so if we're doing that job for them, then what function are they really performing any longer in the state? Uh, they're certainly not uh, holding health care costs down, which was one uh, feature they were thought to bring to the, bring to the table. Uh, and so it's possible that government uh, can do those jobs better. Candidly, I think we're already doing them largely ourselves by uh, programs like reinsurance and so forth. One thing I can guarantee uh, is that uh, the Department of Health, uh, the legislatures of the Capitol, are more interested in providing health to Minnesotans, health care to Minnesotans, than they are in reaping profits uh, or building their business or expanding into a new state. Uh, and the same cannot be said of the private health insurance industry. The, yes, they do have to make money. Uh, last week, I want to, since I've got you here, I want, want to talk about one more thing. The Senate unanimous, unanimously passed a bill to license and regulate pharmacy benefit managers. As a physician and as a senator from the other side of the aisle, why is this a good idea? Oh, it's a great idea. And most people who are watching the show won't even know what a pharmacy benefit manager is, but they are huge corporations that are middlemen in the, in the interval between when a doctor writes you a prescription and when you go to fill that prescription at Walgreens. Uh, and they set your formulary, which drugs will actually be given to you. Sometimes they choose more expensive drugs or older drugs uh, because they're getting a rebate from the drug manufacturer. And all of those negotiations and business dealings are invisible to uh, the patient and to the doctor that's trying to keep down costs and so forth. Uh, what Senator Jensen's bill did is just shine a bright light on all of those transactions so that we can at least start to study you know, who's getting money for what? Are we really holding down health care costs? Are we really providing the best medications for the dollar? Uh, and again, I don't think that pharmacy benefit managers are as interested in that as they are in sort of cutting the best deal uh, with manufacturers that they can get. So in order for us to at least try to drive us towards higher quality and lower costs in this state with drug prices, uh, we're going to need to shine a little light and regulate the pharmacy benefit managers a bit. Senator Matt Klein, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Shannon.